Welcome back and thanks for tuning in to another episode. Today we'll be talking about materials. Uh, I just want to mention one thing before we get started on that, which I should have said in the last video, is the build function up here. The build function basically builds your project together and checks if there's any bugs. So you may have noticed if you were playing around with your level, if you deleted these meshes, the shadow remained behind. If we click the little drop down here, build lighting only, that will refresh the, the level, build it together and it will remove the shadows for you. So if you've done a bit of work and want to check everything's working smoothly, or if you're having some issues with lighting and shadows, just click the build or the build lighting only and that will sort that out for you. So alright, let's get started. Okay, so materials. Every single mesh in Unreal will have a material attached to it. Uh, to apply a material to something, you can drag and drop it onto it, or if you look in the details panel under material, you can manually change it here. You will also notice that some meshes require two elements of material, just like our little mannequin here, you'll see that he has element zero and element one. Don't be afraid, this is just because when the creator of this model made the model, he thought it would be easier to colour him in by splitting the materials into two. So he didn't have to make one material which covered it all, he could split that into two to make it easier for him. So applying materials, great, pretty easy right? Creating materials on a bit of a harder level there. So if, we, if you go into your content browser and right click, this will be how you can create new things. You can also click add new here if you don't have any space to right click in your browser. So we're going to right click and move up to material and click material. Just call this anything, material one maybe, and double click to open it up. Once it's open, you can just pull at the top and drag it into the top to tab it. Uh, that's the same with most things in Unreal. You can either work with it out and move it wherever you like, but personally, I prefer tabbing it just because I find it's easier only looking at one at a time. But each to their own, you can decide what you think is best for you. But just like everything in Unreal, very overwhelming at first, right? Uh, let me break it down for you. So in the top left, we have the preview. This is what your material looks like. If you want to see what it looks like on a cube, you can click the cube. If you want to see what it looks like on a cylinder, click the cylinder. But I like just leaving it as a sphere. Uh, in the bottom left, we have the details panel. This is all the properties you can change for the material. Um, and here we have what the material is actually going to be. We can plug in different things into these nodes and it will change what the material looks like. So for example, if we make a color red, this is a color red here. At the moment you see nothing's happening with the material. If we actually plug that into the base color, it should show a red color, yes. So just like the thing I created here, these are all the different things you can be dragging in to your little spot here and plug in to change the material. Like I said, materials can either be super complex, super simple by just having a, a color of some sort, but they can also be insanely confusing and complex with all these different nodes added in. Um, I'm just going to be covering the simple stuff, like I said, because otherwise it's just going to be too much for me and too much for you guys. One thing I actually almost forgot to mention was how to delete things. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, clicking on an object, pressing delete will delete it, left click and hold and select multiple objects and delete to delete groups of things. Really simple, almost forgot to mention it but there you go for anyone struggling with deleting anything. So I'm going to begin with explaining all the nodes which I feel are essential to knowing and then we'll show some material examples which you could use in your game. So base colour, pretty self-explanatory, is the base color <laughs> so if we drag in a constant free vector this is how you can make a color up so if you just pick any color you like and then plug it into your base color that will appear on your preview uh, one thing i want to mention is that all the um all the different nodes you can drag in here they also show the hotkeys so this this one has a free next to it if you hold three down and then left click, you can spawn it without having to drag it in. These things are good to get used to just because 
after doing loads of materials, you'll want to be doing things quick and it speeds up the whole process when you can just use your fingers and quickly get nodes in. For the metallic node, kind of like what it says in the name, is how metal your material looks. So if we drag in a constant or press one and click, you can drag in a number here and this value can be changed from zero to one and that can be plugged into your metallic. So with, with a value of zero, your material won't be metallic at all. If you have a value of one, it will be as metal looking as possible. Um, if you're any Photoshop users or anything out there, most people would be used to metallic being from zero to 100%. Instead, it's just zero to one. So if you want a material which is half metallic, you go for P5 instead of 50%. So just remember, zero to one instead of zero to 100. Specular is how much your material will reflect light. Zero being non-reflective and one being very reflective. So if we take our node here and if we hold down the Alt key and then left click, it will delete the connection. Then we can plug that into Specular and then if we ramp this up to one, it should be as reflective as possible, zero, non-reflective. You get the idea. Roughness is how rough an object is. Zero is not rough, one is very rough. Emissive color is if you want a color, a material to sort of glow. So if we plug this green into emissive, it should have a, a glow of green. The normal node here is what sort of bumpiness you will have on your material. So if we press T, hold down T and left click, we can bring up the texture sample. Then if we just pick any of the normal maps from the starter content, you can see they're a normal map because they're sort of purpley, purpley color. So if we slot that into there, put the RBG into the normal, and then we will see our material has this bumpy texture on it. And that is what a normal map is. It adds a bit more of a 3D effect to your material by bumping it up a little bit. So if you just delete everything, that's all I've done, you will notice that some of the nodes are greyed out and that's because they are irrelevant for this type of material. So to change the material, if we go onto the left in the details section, we notice the blend mode. So there's opaque and all these different types of materials. The only ones I want you to worry about are opaque, which is basically a normal material, and translucent, which adds opacity. Translucent is good for things like glass and stuff. So if we take a look at opacity here, if we bring in a constant by holding down one and left clicking, we can actually make our material be more invisible or completely invisible. So with a value of zero, if we plug that into opacity, the material will be completely invisible. If we give it a value of P5, it will be half invisible. So don't worry about this too much. I just needed to mention that you can change the type of material in blend mode and it opens up different nodes for different uses. Okay, we're almost there. Uh, so what if you wanted to get a picture on one of your objects? So if we've got a cube here, let's say we wanted to print a picture on this cube. So if we drag and drop a texture in, so any PNG or JPEG, drag and drop it into your content browser and it will appear. If you don't like doing it this way, you can always click import and find it in your files. So this texture on its own isn't actually a material, but Unreal Engine being the nice guys they are, if you drag and drop it onto an object, a material will be created. You'll notice if you throw your material onto other objects in the level, uh, the material takes up a different amount of space and has a different scaling. This is actually set uh, when you're making the models in your 3D modeling software, so don't worry about that too much right now. Um, so if we open up this uh, material, we can see all Unreal Engine's done. It's made a texture sample, plugged it into base color, and then selected the texture that was imported. One more super duper quick thing. If you've been making changes to your material and you're not seeing the changes on your level, make sure you click apply. Apply basically refreshes your level with all the updated things you've done on your material. So yeah, remember that. Okay, so I know it's a hell of a lot of information. I'm gonna put a summary sheet up here for you guys. So just take a look at that, try and take it in. 
Then after that, I'm gonna show you some example materials where you can basically copy what I've done and then you can use those materials in your game, just the key essential materials which you might wanna play around with and use. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you how to do is how to make an emissive color which glows. So right click, create material, call this whatever you want, open it up. So first we need a color, so hold three and click. Then make any color you want. I'm gonna go for green. And what you'd usually do is just plug this straight into emissive color and that would be it. But it's actually not very bright, so it doesn't glow a lot. But we can actually increase the glow by multiplying this. So if you hold M and click, you can create a multiply node, plug it in and then multiply it by around 50. If you go any higher, it'll be more bright. If you go any lower, it'll be less bright. And that is an emissive color for you. The next material I'm gonna show you how to make is a moving one. So let's right click again, new material, we'll just call this moving. And then we'll create a texture by holding T and clicking, plugging the RBG into base color, and then right clicking and typing panner. This could either be found on the right here or you can right click and search for different nodes. Then plug this into the UVS. Now I've gone to the texture, under the texture, find a texture. I'm gonna try and find, yeah, here you go, a fire one. And then click apply. So basically what the panel does is you can change the speed X and the speed Y. So if we put a speed X at 0.2, it should move across the room like that, yes. Um, I'm gonna just go for a minus 0.3 on the Y, so it moves down. So apply this and then throw it onto a mesh. This can be used for any sort of fire or magma, but it looks a bit dark as you can see. So why don't we use what we learned in the emissive material to make it brighter. So let's plug the RBG into emissive and then it's brighter. Just like we use the multiply node to make these brighter, we can also make use the multiply node to make it less bright. So if we bring in a multipl multiply node again, press M and click, and then we actually multiply it by 0.2, that'll divide it by five, and then we have a less bright material. So you can just play around with that, see what works for you. So there is a moving material. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to put prints on walls or objects or wherever you want. So the first thing you need is a texture without a background. To make this, you can go onto Photoshop, delete the background and save it as a PNG and you will get an image which looks something like this. Then create a new material, right click, material, call this whatever you want, print or something. Then we're gonna make a texture sample, put in the PNG photo you have, then click on the base, change the material domain to deferred decal. These are called decals, these prints. Uh, then we'll change, change the blend mode to translucent. Then we'll just plug the RBG into base color so it prints the photo, the, the texture you've got, and then we'll plug the alpha into opacity. And what the alpha usually does it subtracts the background from the photo. So as you can see, there's no white bits on the photo anymore. It's just the eye. So apply this and then go back onto your map. Then we're gonna bring in a decal. So in the place actors, type decal. Under the properties, details, find your decal, find your material we just made. We called it print and then rotate it until it's visible. Uh, one thing with decals is that you do actually need the area to be lit. So if you can't see it very well, get a light, throw it in, and as you can see, it lights up a lot better when the light's there. I think that's it guys. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for episode three. Give me some feedback. Let me know if you want me to go quicker, slower. Give me some tips. I appreciate all of it. Thank you for watching. Catch you guys in the next one.